you should all be able to see my screen. I have several things up here. I can't really make the PowerPoint as large as the screen for one reason. This is how I do it. So I'm starting with a very basic here on when you open PowerPoint and it gives you, I go for the blank, which over here under insert, and it says new slides. It'll look, ask you what kind of slides you want. I like the blank slides because it gives you the most flexibility for what it is that I like to do with this. So the first one I did sort of, I started a screen, but if you're going for a background color, these are the things that I usually like to do is I pick a color. So if you hit your first tab and you come down here and it talks about layouts, and then you've got a format background, it'll give you another screen over here to the right and you can choose a solid fill and you can pick a color. So I usually like to pick something that's lightish, but not uh, totally boring. So this time around, we're going to go with blue gray. And there you go. Now we have a blue gray background and it's over here. You start with file. I'm sorry, you don't start with file. You can start it at home. So now that I've got a background that I want, I'm going to do the same thing on the second one. And I'm going to say, okay, fill it with the same color. Now I've got two of them, one of which is blank. And it's the color I want for the background of the entire program. So at this point, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite buttons. We're going to do a new slide. And then we're going to come up here. We're going to do right click. And we're going to tell it to duplicate the slide. So now you'll see that instead of blank slides, which I was getting, I've now got a blank, but it's with the same background. And my favorite key in the world is the F4 key, because if I hit F4 again, Why is it not working here? Well, okay. F4 does not want to work. We won't be teaching you F4. F4 is supposed to do the last thing repeated again so that each of those would come up. But we can just say duplicate slide and tell it that's a click on the screen, then do a right click, then come down to duplicate slide, and that's a left click, and then you've got multiples. So now you have a bunch that you can work on that are the same background. Then I am really big. We're gonna go into page two here. What you really need to do is make sure that you've scanned the covers that you want, and I've got here, here are some of the ones that you saw if you were on the last time looking at uh, my fish program. I just grabbed that group of uh, slides. You need to take a PDF of your of scan of the covers that you want. And I have to recommend a, a DPI of at least 300. Otherwise, when you're playing with it, it gets a bit grainy. So it's important to make sure that you've got a, a, a depth, if you will, of, of picture that you don't lose things. So what I pulled here is I've got covers from the fish. And then when David had pulled up when we were putting together the program on stuffed ships, he went through the internet and pulled up pictures of all the different HMS ships that he wanted me to use on that. So I grabbed those pictures and then the covers from the fish. Um, it will be a kind of a slapdash, if you will, but 
this isn't actually to put together a program so much as it's to show you how I put together what I do. So I'm going to copy. So we're going to click on the picture. We're going to do a copy. We're going to come over to the PowerPoint. We're going to do a paste. And it's going to give me the picture. It will at this point, this is an automatic by that PowerPoint does. It's going to ask you, oh, gee, don't you want to design this a little bit? You'll see over here to the right that there's all sorts of ways that it shows you that you can design the page you're looking at. I tend to just close it. I'll do what I wish. And then ultimately, it will say there's a button on there that says, stop asking me this question until I reopen PowerPoint in the future. So here's the picture. You can move it where you want it. You can size it. For the picture itself, you just have to left click on it, move it around. You want to resize it, you come down to like the corners are best for making sure that the picture doesn't skew. You can say, okay, there's the picture I want. Then over here, I want this. I want to copy this. So I'm going to come down to a corner. When I have the corner squared, you see that little target. I'm going to pull up and over with the mouse button down. And I'm going to tell it to copy the image. And I'm going to paste it over here. And there's the cover. Now, obviously, this is too big. And again, it's going to see. See, there's that wonderful little thing that says, stop suggesting ideas until I restart PowerPoint. I'm going to click that so it goes away and we don't get interfered with anymore. Then again, we've got resizing. This is a bit large, so I'm going to come down to this corner. It's going to again, I'm going to click on that little circle. I'm going to resize the cover to the size I want, and I'm going to move it down. Now, the nice thing is if you're watching what I'm doing, you will see occasionally right there, you'll see over to the bottom right, it's showing little arrows. What it's selling you there, and then if you look over on the upper left, it's showing you that on this page, both the cover and the picture are exactly the same distance now from the margin side. It's not always important, but sometimes aesthetically, it's nice to sort of have a polished look. So that does help. Now, here we've got, I've got the, I've got my cover the size I wanted, but the picture kind of overlaps. I can either make the picture smaller or I can crop the picture. Now the cropping of the picture is, it's done in two ways. If you're up here on picture format, if you can see where my mouse is, there's a button over here that says crop. And now it's lining. I can take and make this picture the size I want. Now, I don't really need what looks like it's a pier in the background there. So I'm going to click on the middle and take that whole side down. And there's a ship. Now it's more in the shape that I want. Now, the other thing that's really important to me is this is something I think Steve actually does. I don't know that I've actually had to do this, but leaving that alone for a minute is if you want to have, let's call them bullet points for better word, uh, we're going to do an insert text box. So we're coming over here to insert which is the third one in. And then over here, you'll see that there's a text box. Text box to me is one of the best things created because it lets you do, you can write what you need. You can reshape it. You can resize it. You can change the font in it. But more importantly is that if you're moving around your pictures and whatnot, 
you can move where you want the text to be without having to retype, without having to worry where you were on a margin or pulling in something else. So text boxes are very important. So I'm just going to say point one. And then it's going to be whatever it was that I was going to say, basically, blah, 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 blah. And there might be a cover underneath that. So we're going to copy it again. Now, here again is where it's a, the insert and duplicate are very good because I've now made point one, but I want point one to also be on the page where I say point two. So we're going to come down, we're going to click on three over here to the left side. We're going to tell it to duplicate the slide. And now here on slide four, I've got point one. This picture might go away. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to hit delete. So that goes away. But now I'm going to click on point one. Make this a little bit larger. And at the end of that, come on, there we go. I'm going to say, come down maybe a line or two, depending on whether you want an immediate or not. So we'll do that and we'll say point two. And then that becomes a blah, 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 blah. So what happens there is that you're here, you make your point one, you immediately click to point two and you've got point one and point two. And you can do the same thing again with, you know, three, four, however many, bullet points you want to point out as to what you're saying, what you're summarizing, those sort of things. But you can, instead of having to duplicate and cut and paste everything, you can go up here and you can start making your bullet points and then just tell it to duplicate. And then you can duplicate this slide again. And now down here on number five, we've got point one, point two, and we can do point three. And please feel free if you have questions, if you don't understand something, or if I did something too fast, do feel free to interrupt me. But I have a question. Okay. Um, you covered this at the beginning, but I, I can't remember. Where are you drawing these images from? From uh, your... You mean this? The yeah, you the, the ones you're drawing over and putting in in the slide. Okay, these are ones. This is where I say you need to scan your covers, and and that I really didn't go into, I guess, in depth, except for the fact that you need to make sure that you're using at least a 300 DPI. What I did with these is I went through my notebook of covers, and I pulled the ones that I wanted. My uh, computer printer has a scan feature. So I basically scanned these. I put them on the on the the flat surface for copying, and then scanned them onto a PDF file. Okay. So all of these, and I pulled a whole bunch of different ones here. So I could scan it right from. I have my cover scan, so I could just go to my picture library. Exactly. Click on, click on it and bring it over. Yes, I have, and that's why I've got. I, why I said I can't really open PowerPoint to be the whole screen right. because when I'm putting together a presentation, what I usually do is I do all of the scanning of all of the covers. So I've got like here, you can see this is fish, right. fish caches on sub four. There's right. probably number five, number two, number three, however many it was that I had scanned. Okay. So, and yes, and when you pull up your PDF, then as I say, you, you it's this wonderful little bullet point. You can start it in either corner, but if you left click and hold it down, 
And the one thing I will say is that when I did the, the Civil War, I sort of copied one of those. When I did the fish, I actually took the fish out of the notebook and I took them out of their sleeves and I scanned them, making sure that I had them squared off. Now, with David and the Civil War covers, when we did that presentation uh, two years ago, I was working more on with this. I'm going to enlarge this for just a second. And you can see, I was not taking apart all of his work because he had put together all of these pages with pictures. Right. And that, so you'll see though, that if I try and copy this cover, it's not squared. So oh. I might've cheated a little bit and squared it off myself. Or when I put it in, I didn't care. And I just let it go and show the fact that it was not, not a perfect square. But part of the reason I like squaring it is that when you've got your page put together, there's, I'm sorry? Sunflower appears because it's totally messed up. So I have to even it out by getting water. That goes on the list of extra Oh, okay. I don't think that's me. If you notice up here, again, we're on the home page. I'm down, I'm on my Stingray cover, but I don't want it to just sit on the page the way it is. So you can go back over to, if you click on it, you'll notice if I'm not clicked on it, it's not giving me options. But if I click on the cover itself, it's giving me several options up here that don't highlight otherwise. One of them is that you can do an outline. So I'm going to say, OK, I've got a nice blue gray here. So let's pick a darker blue gray to out. No, that's not really a darker blue gray, is it? Uh, let's do a rust. So we're going to do a, a rust colored. Now you don't really see a whole lot of this. So you can come down here after you pick your color. If you come down here to the weight, you'll see it's doing a three quarter point, which is pretty fine. I really want you to be able to see it. So now if you see, if I hover over three points, you can see that I've highlighted. Now four gets a little bit more and six is almost too much. Three looks good. So I've decided, okay, my cover is going to be outlined in a three. So now it's not just static with the envelope on the page. The envelope is now nicely outlined. I can do something else the same way with a picture. Let's say I don't really want to do the picture. Let's do the picture in a gold. So we're going to click then on the outline. Again, we're going to come down to the weight. And I'm going to say, OK, let's do a yellow in a three point. And now it looks a little bit more polished. Are there questions so far? Um, Lori, uh, Peter here. Thank you. Uh, this is great. Um, just a little earlier, it's, it's sort of related. Um, you you had uh, picture format, and then you cropped the picture. Um, and you found picture format. It was on your top bar. But when I look at my top bar, I can't it's find picture format. So it might be a different uh, version of PowerPoint. But I'm just wondering where you found that. No, it is, it is, it should be there. What happens is you have to click. Notice I'm not clicked. It's missing on mine also. It should be right here after help. And there's nothing there. Ah, it's there now. Okay. And there, and if I pick, click on the picture, now it says picture format. Okay, that's great. And, you know, a, a, another question, uh, the, the little wheel at the top, what what sir? What purpose does that serve? Uh, when once you when you highlight the picture, I think this one. This is yeah. this is also a great tool. This has to do with orientation. So I don't know that I've got any. 
I don't think, I think all of these pictures are pretty much the way I would, yeah, okay. Uh, let's say that this picture actually is sideways from where it needs to be. Right. This little circle. Yeah. Let's, let's me reorient. Okay. And you're just moving your mouse. Yes, this is a, okay. this is a left click on the circle and then I'm taking it in the direction I want it to go. Okay. Right. And then Great. releasing. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Um, certainly. And that's also part of the thing with if you're on your picture or on your cover, if you want, there's several different ways to do this, but if you don't want to I, I would call it skewing. If you don't want the picture to be enlarged in one spot or you see if i take this you'll notice yeah it's really warped how the sh the ship is the size and everything so i'm going to go back to home and I, we all love these buttons and i'm sure you're aware they're here undo oh yeah, so, yeah. okay yeah 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 so on the home button over here to the left you should have an undo so you can say oh, okay let's <laughs> not do that again Right. So I'm going to come down to this one and I'm going to copy another. So I'm going to click on the picture, I'm going to left click and copy, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. And again, I can crop some of this water out if I want to, but if I don't want the picture to be as cued, as it turned out on that last one, this is what the corners are for. Don't go for the middle, go for a corner. And if you enlarge it, it enlarges the whole picture proportionately. Right. But now I've got this ship the size I want it, but I've got a little bit too much sky, a little bit too much ocean. So I'm going to leave it on the picture. I'm gonna come up here to picture format. I'm going to come over here to crop. And now if I wanted to crop the whole thing, there again, I can go for the corners. But in this case, I only want to get rid of some of the sky and some of the water. So for that, I'm actually going to the middle and saying just top and bottom, not side to side and not the whole thing. And there, now I've got a much nicer picture. <clears throat> Now up here. May I ask the, one question? Absolutely, that's what this is for. Okay, you have that on landscape. What about for portrait? Um, I don't think PowerPoint really does a portrait, do they? I mean, I've always. I'm not sure that's why it's asking me, does it turn it? Or does it stay in? It's this I'm format. thinking a display for a con for a, a stamp show or something. Oh, where you need to go up and down. <laughs> yes, uh, this is, portrait. This is... I think that's what they call it. <clears throat> yes, it's a portrait or landscape. PowerPoint to me, I've never actually tried to do something in. Uh, Steve, have you ever done anything in, in a different layout? I always use this. Yeah, I have always used this. Okay. I'm I'm kind of looking. I've never. Because I've been struggling with mine on um, Word and then insert what I need on the page, but I type in Word and go from there. <clears throat> but okay, don't don't let me hold you up. Oh well you're not really I mean <clears throat> it's a it's a good question actually but I because I'm enjoying what you're doing so I it, it, to be perfectly honest because almost every screen nowadays is is you know the wide screens they're much wider than they are top to bottom so 
PowerPoint, I think, is more designed to be shown on a screen, a monitor screen, as opposed to something that would be like Word where you could do a landscape. Okay. Because Thank even you. even t even televisions are, are much more of a widescreen format anymore. And I think PowerPoint takes it very much to do <clears throat> that. <clears throat> And okay. I'm not sure. It's it's a good question, and I will at some point I will have to take a look at it and see. If you go into help, it tells you how to do it. It is available. I, did, is I didn't available. know it. I didn't no. know it either. But you just yeah, go into that... type type portrait format into help, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. Al. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Now we've all learned something new that's good. So <clears throat> actually I kind of like that because then you can lay things out for a different reason um, in a different direction. So the other thing that we're going to do here is back to insert, we're going to take our text box, we're going to drop a text box in and we're basically going to say, this is the USS Stingray. and whatever information I was going to say about it, let's say it goes there. And, and again, I'm just going to say sort of a blah, blah, blah. Now, what you can do is if you copy this, eh, I do get that a lot, it drives me nuts. You can copy, if you actually copy and just come down to the next screen and do a paste, it will actually paste it exactly in the same place. Even if you don't want it to, you want to move it later, that's fine. But if you want something where it's on the screen, the same sort of way, like there's the USS Stingray, then you can take Stingray, and take out Stingray and type in, oh, look, this is the verb. No, this is the anvil. And you can just edit however you want. And then you decide, well, I actually kind of want to do two covers on this page. So we're going to move this down over here. And see, this is what I'm talking about when I say it is so much easier to use a text box because I don't have to say, oh gosh, I don't want it there, delete that, and then start typing over here and say, oh, I didn't like that either, and have to retype it again. I can just play where I want this. And again, one of the nice things is I need something centered. I want this one centered. So now I can see, see the little red line tells me it's centered up and down, or well, side to side actually. And there. Now I know it's perfectly centered because when I click on it, you'll notice that it's going to tell me that I'm centered top to bottom and side to side. Or I can move it. And I can see, okay, if I put it here, it's exactly the same distance from the side to the cover to the side to the word. So again, it that's an aesthetic. But it's a helpful one because it lets you, without having to say, eyeballing, what am I looking at? You can say, oh, look, I know I'm in the same distance from here to there, there to here. I'm good to go. And again, now we want to go back. We're going to look at this. We're going to go home. And we're going to say, I want this cover also to have that wonderful rusty color background. So we're going to be on home. We're going to come over here to shape outline. I'm going to click down. We're going to pick our color. We're going to pick our weight. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can actually have a lot of fun with these sort of things because under weights, you've got your 
all your different weight lines, but you've also got something here where you can do, it's an angler. So we want something that looks a little more crude, something a little more bowed. You can actually have an awful lot of fun with, you can see if you click on the more, you've got lots and lots of options here. We can do dashes. So there's lots of things that you can play with to give. a different look to your layout. Me, I almost always go for the solid lines because that's kind of a nicer look to me. And there it is. So next questions. Nobody has any questions. Yeah, a question. Okay. Yeah, uh, sort of uh, a follow up uh, to what uh, the other gentleman said a couple minutes ago. Say I want to display, I want to print it out in portrait. When you print out what's on the screen now, on the printed version, is there any additional margin that's uh, reserved or whatever? You know, I honestly do not know. I I've never. I only use PowerPoint for a presentation. I've never used, if I'm going to do something to represent uh, like what I want to see for a an exhibit, I almost always am working in Word and then scanning things to a PDF. So I don't know, but if we go to tell the design, it, if yeah, design, go to slide size, go down and then to it, custom slide custom. size, and then you can tell it. You can you can fool with your dimensions there. And there's also remember where you were asking about portrait or landscape. This also tells you where your portrait your landscape and your margins. So this is also very good to know. Yeah, I'm thinking more in the way of, I print it out and then like, for example, where you have the angler cover on your slide now, where the mm -hmm. corners are, I glue these little sticky corners in and then put the real cover on top of it. I'm thinking of something like that. Which makes, yeah, that does make actually a good deal of sense. Um, yeah, that's what I was talking. I I would put my verbiage and then know where my cover is going to be because I can see it by inserting a, a, a copy of it, but not, then deleting it from the page and just leave the verbiage, print it, and then insert it on my display. Which, yeah, which makes sense. So let's go back here. We were at home. Then we came over to design. And then we looked at slide size. And if you come down to custom slide size, you can see you can play here with portrait and also your margin so that you know if you need a half an inch on either side because of how an exhibit is going to be framed, then you can make sure that you're looking at the right margins here. 
Thank you, Steve. That was very helpful. I knew yeah, you should have been getting this. Thank you very much. But that absolutely answers a couple of different questions. Now, if you're curious how things are looking when you reach a point where you've done a couple of slides and you're finished and you want to say, okay, how is it actually going to present? Because you'll notice that when those of us who do presentations, you don't see this long list of, of slides that we've been working on. What you see is the slideshow. So up here at the top, you come over to slideshow and you can just, you can do a number of different things. But the first thing I like to do is to see how it actually looks. So now you'll see if I was presenting, it's actually showing how it would be on a screen without all of those to the side. You can see much better how the sizing and the framing ends up looking. And when you're done, you just tell it to end show, which is a right click down at the bottom, end show, and it takes you right back to where you were. And I really think that was pretty much all the things that I wanted to talk about on this. So if you've got other questions, let me know. Otherwise, we can have a discussion about who is now going to be doing presentations because you've learned so much today. So are there other questions? This is going to be recorded and posted on YouTube. Yes. That. Okay. So I would just go to YouTube and then USCS. Yes. Okay, thank you. Lori, if you have a moment, would you show a little bit about how to do different backgrounds? I have a heck of a time with that. And what I tend to do is if I get a nice background I like, I just copy the presentation and drop my new presentation into it. So I've got the background, but if you could spend a moment on how to make clever backgrounds, I'd appreciate it. Okay. I. I I don't do a lot of clever backgrounds. I think Steve actually does more of those than I do. But if you come up here to home and you come over here to designer, it's going to say there's nothing there. But the minute I put in, let's say, let's do a cover. <clears throat> let's do that cover. I do like anglers. I'll give you one of my favorite, the bat fish. As I have said before, this is a funky looking little fish. So I put the picture in. And then the minute it, there's something for it to look at, you'll notice that designer is now throwing out a whole bunch of different things that it suggests. And you can click on it to see that's not bad. Yes. So it'll give you some ideas as far as different things that you can do. This one's not bad because it gives you some room still to, to write around what you're looking at. Some of these where it's taking your orange and moving on with some odd looks. Sort of this one looks almost like it's trying to give you a warped view of a James Bond beginning. If you move your slide, change your color size, throw on a picture. And then come back to designer again. 
you can see now it, it wants to throw both things together with a line in between, or it's giving you some different backgrounds. Does that help? I mean, is that more of what you wanted or were you looking for something? That's all brand new to me, thanks. More generic, okay. It, yeah. does, have, it does have some clever things that it can come up with. Can uh, you stay with that cover you have in that ship? Can you overlap, change the overlap from the cover to the ship being overlapped the cover? No, there you go. That I like that. That's not bad at all, is it? No. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Well, and, and that's the nice <clears throat> thing about designer. Well, I really don't use it. It does throw out a heck of a lot of suggestions for what might snap make it a little bit snappier. This one I might actually save and use at some point because I kind of like how it's broken up this the page. Uh, well, I'm on, I'm on the over here. Now, see, if you do something like this, if you're asking, we can put the picture over there and then that over top of the picture or if you want and this is i think actually some of what you might have been asking i wanted to overlap but now i've got the boat over you know the ship is overlapping the cover but say i want the cover to overlap the ship if you go up here I, i'm trying to think of it nope ah there it is okay so we want to bring the cover to the top and the photo to the background, then you're going to come up here. You're going to be on picture format. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to be on home. And then this button up here that says arrange. If you hit arrange and then you tell it to bring it to the front. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. So you can move those around. Now you say, oh, you know, I actually looked better the other way around. So we click back on the ship and we say, bring that to the, bring that one forward. Okay. If you like to use mouses, just right click on the image and it'll bring up that menu for you. That way you don't have to go hunted out of the top menu. Do you know, I've actually never not hunted that particular one off of the, off of the top, but I don't use it very often. And so, you can thanks. see it in the center, bring to front, bring to back. Bring, yep, send, send to back. back, bring to front. And you've actually got several options out there. If you click on the arrow, it'll ask you, you know, if you've got more than one, say we did two ships, since I've got another ship here. And now what it's saying is, instead of bring to front, you can bring it forward or bring it all the way out. <clears throat> okay, so are there other questions? Thank you. Anybody else? Our hour is pretty much almost done. Does anybody else have any questions? Is there something that you really wanted to know that I haven't touched on? Because Steve is another really good resource. And while he's on here with us, it might help to ask him if, if it's something I can't answer. So are there other questions? Hour is over already. Jeez, it went so fast. I have a question. Okay. I have an Apple computer. Does Apple have a PowerPoint? Uh, 
Yes, that's what I use. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you, I don't know if Apple has its own version of it, but PowerPoint does have a program that will work on Apple. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I'm going to do stop share. And I'm going to say thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Very good. You're, you're welcome. Now I expect all of you to volunteer if you haven't already. We'll be looking forward to your putting on your own PowerPoint presentation and have some of those snappy designer items right on the screen. Okay. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Oh, that's great, Laurie. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks, it, uh, I'll be honest with you. I've only been doing this. As, I've only played with PowerPoint as long as David was wanting to do the uh, presentation. So it's not, it's not difficult because I had no idea what I was doing when I set up the first one. And I've polished a little bit, but it, it's pretty basic, I think. And it's got a lot of, it offers a lot of things that you can play with it while you're working on it. So like the designer, if you want something that doesn't look quite so generic and you want something with a little bit more pep once in a while, those are things to be looking for. So. That's great.